In Chapter 5.2, we're going to pick up with the distinction between real and nominal GDP. So what is the difference between real and nominal GDP? Well, herein lies the problem of why we're even concerned with it, because a significant use of GDP is to measure how production changes from year to year. That should be obvious. If last year the GDP was measured at $4 billion and this year it's measured at $5 billion, most people would say, oh, the economy is getting better off because they know that the meaning of GDP is the total value of goods and services. However, there's a flaw in that argument. One of the flaws is, is the prices we're using to calculate the GDP, because remember from the previous set of slides, we saw that what you take the price that you currently have times the number you make gives the total market value of that item. Then you add that up for all the items and then you have the GDP. But that's using prices from what last year when you did last year's GDP. When you do this year's GDP, whose prices are you gonna use? Well, you're gonna use this year's prices, right? Because that's what the GDP is defined as. Current production times current prices. But if the prices themselves are changing, then when you look at the total GDP number, it went up from 4 billion last year to 5 billion this year. Is that an increase of production of oranges, uh, bicycles and concerts? Or is that just simply all the prices went up? Well, it's a darn good question. We can't answer that. So now we're gonna to have to define something. We're gonna define the fact that output can be measured both in nominal terms and real terms. We're only interested ultimately in the real terms. In other words, how much actual stuff got made. So we're gonna to try to remove all the price changes. So let's do some more definitional work. Nominal GDP is the value of the final output produced in a given period. That's the normal definition of GDP measured in, period, in the prices of that period, which we call current prices. The effects of price changes are included in the data. Now, here's one major problem. <clears throat> which year is the current year? In ordinary speech, what would that mean? Well, it would mean the year we're living in right now. Unfortunately, that's not what we mean in economics. The current year is the year in which we're concerned with the data. If we are always only looking at this year's data, then current year and this calendar year are, would be the same thing. But what if you're interested in what, uh, let's say, um, GDP was 10 years ago? And so instead of using this year's GDP numbers, you're using GDP numbers from 10 years ago. Well, what prices should you use? Well, you should use the prices from 10 years ago. Since we're talking about the data of 10 years ago, whatever those prices were 10 years ago, we'll call current prices. So it's current to the year in which you're interested in, not the current calendar year. So please don't fall into that mistake of looking at what the current calendar year is when you're looking at current prices. It's current to the year in which you're looking at the data. Okay, so now what's real GDP? Well, we're going to take the final the value of the final output produced in a given period. So, so far, it sounds like the same thing, but now we're going to adjust for changing prices. In other words, the current year market values are recalculated in what are called base year dollars, also known as constant dollars. So what we're going to do, this effect has the effect of removing all price changes. We are going to do this by using what are called constant dollars meaning we're going to pick some particular year and call it this is the measurement year and all other years we're going to use those prices so therefore whenever we see changes in our calculated gdp the only thing that comes into the data now will be how many actual physical items are made so that gives us a real picture so whenever we use the word real in economics we're talking about we've adjusted the data to take the inflation out by using a constant price. So let's figure out how we're gonna do that. We do it by computing something called the base year. The base year is the year used for comparative analysis. It's the basis for indexing price changes. It's arbitrary. You just have to pick a year and simply declare, this is the year we're gonna to use to calculate our different prices. So, um, well, like I said, it's a purely arbitrary thing. Someone's got to pick it. 
and it changes every decade or so the government comes out and says now we have a new base year let's think about why that's true the base year is the year we do a huge market survey how do we know how many concerts people go to how do we know how many oranges they eat how do we know all the, how many bicycles they buy from that list that we had gone through before because remember how big is the list I mean if you add up a list of everything all Americans buy for an entire year you're talking about one massive list so we don't do the base year calculation of what people buy every year what we do is we pick one year roughly every 10 years and do a humongous survey of what Americans buy figure out what those prices were and then declare that year is going to be our base year and then every single year we're going to go shopping for those same goods and then see how the prices have changed so we can compare it to the base year okay and then every 10 years or so we do another survey because obviously with new inventions coming out you have you can't just stick with the same you know survey forever because things have changed so much over the years so roughly every 10 years or so the government goes out and does another survey and then declares that to be the base year so we're going to now start to recalculate our GDPs for all years into the base year dollars and then we can declare those numbers to be real GDP let's go through an example so here's our general formula for computing real GDP as you can see uh, we've got um, our formula here uh, real GDP I've highlighted with my little laser pointer so real GDP in year T year T just simply refer you know, T stands for time so some time period so year T will be whatever year you're interested in so year T can be 1990 it can be 1995 whatever year you're trying to figure out information for is year T by definition so you need to fill in what that actual number is depending on what year you're interested in so we take the nominal GDP for that year whatever that T year is let's make it 1995 just I just picked it arbitrarily so what we want to know is what's the real GDP in year um, T 1995 let's go to the nominal GDP in that year in other words the government has collected all this data over the years every year they do this so in 1995 we can go to the list and says oh we produced X number of billions of dollars and then you take that and you divide it by the current price index now mathematically this is super simple but let's think about what is the current price index the current price index is how much would it cost to buy all the goods that were on the list from the base year now it turns out that to make the numbers easy to work with the base year we convert to the number 100. now the reality is if you took the average family because the average income in the United States for an average family is around $68,000 per year that's a lot of stuff people buy right so with $68,000 per year dividing with the numbers like that is a bit inconvenient so what we do is mathematically take the 68,000 and convert it to the to the number 100 and 100 is the price index of the base year and it always is because we make it that way and then every year after that we start to convert all the price changes to change the base year number of 100 into the new number and I'll show you how to do that down here in the formula down below the current price index not the base year because it's always 100 for the base year what's the current price index in other words what's the current average price well here's the formula for it you take the number 100 because that was the base year number and then you add the percentage change in prices for this year and then divide by 100 let's go ahead and do that here in um, my little text box now assume that the prices rose by 17.8 percent this year now of course they didn't but I'm just making up a number 17.8 percent this year so what's the new price index well if last year was the base year then last year was 100 so you would take what 100 from last year's index plus 17.8 for the percentage increase and that would give you 117.8 unfortunately this slid behind my little um, video circle let me just tell you what the numbers are because obviously you can do the math pretty quickly on a piece of paper 100 plus 17.8 is 117.8 divide that by 100 and what do you get you get 1.78 so 1.78 becomes the, the new um, base number for the current year index 
on the next slide, it'll make more sense because we're going to use it on the next slide. So let's go ahead and convert nominal GDP to real GDP. And uh, going from our formula on the previous page, we have real GDP in year T is equal to this formula, nominal GDP in year T divided by the price index. So let's go ahead and take a look for 1991. 1991 had a nominal GDP of, as you can see, 5 trillion. $677.5 billion. Now, from the fact that it's nominal, what year's prices are we using? We're using 1991 prices because that's the current year by definition. Okay? Now, if we want to compare 1991 with 1990, let's just assume, just to make the, the problem simple, we're going to do side by side years. Let's assume 1990 was the base year. So, 1990 being the base year, then we know the current price index is 117.8 divided by 100 is 1.178. Now, we've already done that on the previous slide. So what do we do with this number now that we have the price index? We'll take the nominal GDP, and we can see we got it right here. The nominal GDP of 1991 is 5,677.5 and then divide it by this price index. And what does that do? It shrinks the number down to 4 trillion 819.6 billion. What does that mean? Well, first of all, this is the nominal number. This is the real number. In other words, this is the number measured in current inflated prices. This is the number measured in constant prices. So it turns out the economy did not grow as much as we thought it did. It didn't grow to 5 trillion in real terms. It only grew to 4.8 trillion in real terms if we used last year's prices as our measuring device. So the whole purpose of this is now we can fairly compare 1991 GDP, the real GDP, can now be compared back to 1990 because now we're using the same prices to multiply times the number of goods rather than using current prices. If we did that for every year, we can recalculate all of the nominal GDPs into real GDPs, and then now we can make fair comparisons between one year and another year, even when inflation has taken place. Let's do one, one more example. Uh, let's see, we wanna have a real GDP in year T, and here's our formula as we've done before. Now, let's say for year T, we have 15 trillion um, size economy. So obviously several years have gone by and we started with roughly the five, six trillion dollar level. Now we're up to the $15 trillion level, but it turns out the price index has now risen to 150, which means all of the items that used to cost 100 in the base year, those exact same items now cost 150. I'm sure you've experienced that, right? Last year, eggs cost $2. This year they cost $3. Last year, gasoline was $3. Now gasoline is $3.69. We see this all the time. Prices change. So in order to make a, a real comparison of how much physical items were produced, we now need to make sure that we're taking all the inflation out of this. In this case, we're taking quite a bit out because if we take the nominal GDP divided by the index, price index of 1.5, it turns out we only produce $10 trillion worth of real GDP, even though the numbers added up to 15 trillion this year. But remember, they only added up to 15 trillion because we're using the ridiculously high prices of today, not the prices of the base year. So whenever we want to know what the truth is, we always have to adjust the nominal GDP to real in order to make sure that the inflation is taken out of the numbers to make sure that we have a fair comparison. Now let's take a look at a really interesting chart, at least I hope you find it interesting. This chart is, as you can see, we have a base year, which in this case happens to be 2012. Remember, the base year is arbitrary. So whenever the government does the survey, that becomes the base year. And then that base year moves constantly as the government updates every 10 years or so, they'll put in a new base year. So at the year that we're in the base year, nominal GDP and real GDP are the same number. Because if you go back and look at the math for our um, making the price index number, the price index number in the base year is 100. So if you divide 100 by 100, you come up with one. Divide anything by one and you got your same number. 
So in the base year, you notice, let's take a look one more time. This slide, the blue line is going to be real GDP. The orange line is nominal GDP, which means it has the current prices in it. Now, over the years, you can see from 2000 up to 2020, the economy has grown quite a bit. Because remember, the vertical axis is keeping track of GDP. In the orange number, these are the numbers actually collected as we went along using whatever year's price we're dealing with. 2001's prices for 2001 GDP, 2003 prices for 2003 GDP, 2012 prices for 2012 GDP, and on and on and on until we get to 2020. Look how steep that line is. And by steep, I mean GDP measured on the vertical axis is rising rapidly. But why is it rising so rapidly? Is it because we produce that much more stuff? Or is it because we're using higher prices to measure that stuff? Well, as you can probably tell, a lot of it is just higher prices. So the blue line shows just what we did on the previous slides. If you took the nominal GDP and readjusted it by dividing by the price index of the current year into the nominal GDP or nominal GDP divided by the price index, you get the real GDP. Now, it turns out that when you have inflation over the years, every year before the base year, the real GDP is actually higher than the nominal GDP because the, the real GDP is going to use 2012 prices, whereas the actual nominal GDP of, let's say, 2004 used 2004 prices. So in that sense, the prices were too low. Let's bring them up to 2012, so we'll use 2012 as our comparison year. So all the prices before the base year need to be added to them to get to the real GDP. But after 2012, going this direction, we're going to try to remove the extra inflation. So you notice the blue line will be below the orange line, or the real GDP will be below the nominal GDP for every year after the base year when there's inflation. And the exact opposite would be true for all the years before the base year. So base year GDP did go up from 2000 to 2020, but as you can see, it didn't go up nearly as dramatically as the nominal GDP.